Gramegna. Thank you, Paolo. Thank you, Pascal. Good evening to all. I'm going to speak on, on two topics uh, on the euro area fiscal stance and on the uh, CMU. Uh, I will obviously say some words on the uh, euro area fiscal stance, as obviously this is very relevant also to the mandate of the ESM. We uh, really welcome the statement that was adopted today in uh, the Eurogroup, which we completely support. We also appreciate, uh, appreciated the um, presentation by uh, the Euro European Fiscal Board. So DSM uh, supports the recommendation for a prudent fiscal policy mix and uh, is uh, completely aligned with the recommendation that uh, countries should now move in the direction of phasing out support measures that uh, were established because of high energy prices, which uh, are not there uh, anymore. So it's not enough to uh, have targeted measures, as we said before, but now we should go towards a phasing out. A, serving, a second topic which in the eye of the SM is very important is the topic, obviously, of inflation. We were confronted initially a couple of months ago and last year, especially uh, with an inflation that was stemming from a supply side shock. And now this uh, inflation uh, is being driven more from the demand side. So uh, this explains probably why, why the uh, core inflation remains stubbornly high. The line item inflation is going down, but core inflation is high. So the prudent fiscal policy uh, is really warranted and will achieve three important objectives. First of all, to support long-term debt sustainability, which the SM obviously closely looks at. Second, this more prudent approach in, for budgets will create fiscal buffers for future shocks and address longer-term challenges such as aging population costs and offer the necessary room for investments for the green and digital transitions. And last but not least, this prudent uh, fiscal stance would help contain inflation pressures. And this is key in order to ensure coherence between the fiscal policies on the one side and the monetary policy of the ECB on the other side. Let's, on this whole issue, be humble. There's a lot of uncertainty out there. And uh, what we definitely need to have at our level is that we need to agree on a new economic governance before the end of the year, especially because we have these uncertainties. On Capital Markets Union, I would like to congratulate Pascal Donoghue for uh, putting this topic uh, uh, to the forefront, uh, f which is at the beginning of a series of discussions we're going to have. Um, the fragmentation uh, in Europe's financial and capital markets is well known, and we as ESM experience that uh, in our activities on the markets. The European uh, uh, size and depth and liquidity uh, are far smaller than the ones of the United States. Let me give you a few figures here. The safe assets segment uh, in the EU represents 4.2 trillion euro, whilst the one of the United States is 22.6 trillion. And if you look at the securitizations market in the EU, it represents 80 billion, and in the United States, 336 billion. So, in those numbers speaks, speak for themselves, and also at level of market makers, uh, European players are, are, are not the biggest ones, not even in Europe. So today we had a bottom-up approach, which was quite useful, and, and we heard lots of proposals of what is being done in different countries. I have noticed uh, a few points that I would like to highlight that seem important for us as ESM, and that is that we should continue and accelerate uh, sustainable finance uh, uh, in Europe 
as we are leaders in this field, the euro represents 50% uh, of all uh, ESG bonds uh, worldwide. So uh, in terms of capital markets union, if we have more depth and more size, this will uh, boost uh, our market. Second, uh, we are lagging far behind in terms of securitization and quite a lot needs to be done in that area. Last but not least, in terms of safe assets, more supply of safe assets uh, would uh, help underpin the euro as a reserve currency, a topic that we have addressed today. It's good news that uh, the use of the euro, despite uh, the crisis that we have known recently, uh, is picking up uh, again, and uh, we need uh, to have uh, a strong euro uh, that uh, can compete with other currencies. Let me also underline that the entry into force uh, of uh, the new ESM treaty will also underpin the safe assets issue that I just alluded to. Thank you.